Hey everyone, it's Libby from Meister Tarot. I'd like to acknowledge the Waramai First Nations people on whose traditional lands these videos are made and welcome to you, your guides, my guides of the Universal Energies. Thank you so much for joining me. I read all your comments. I heart all your comments to show that I've read them. I don't have time to answer all of them, but I do where I can, but I'm super, super appreciated. So thank you for joining me. Okay, entertainment only. The reason uh, us readers put this little card up or, or say entertainment only is um, we are not uh, medical doctors, we are not uh, psychiatrists, we are not um, nuclear physicists. <laughs> um, I am a tarot reader with a background in interior design and architecture, so we know what the cards say, uh, but because we're not experts in our fields, we just need to do a little bit of backside covering there. Okay, huge news, MTG expel from the house for calling Boba. <laughs> Yeah, I do have to chuckle at the crack starting to really starting to show publicly. I was also thrilled to read that there is a marked reduction in deforestation in Brazil, 45% reduction. I know it hasn't turned the ship around, but it's only been, what, 12 months since that election. Uh, I do see, I had read under uh, uh, that under De Silva, the reforestation of the Brazilian rainforest will uh, begin in earnest. So I am uh, very excited about that happening because uh, the, the Brazilian rainforest and the Congo are the lungs of the earth and we do desperately need those forests to be fully functioning and protected. Okay, what I'm going to have a quick look at today is actually the New Zealand election. I was asked by one of my lovely viewers a while back uh, I am dual citizen, New Zealand, Australia, and to be honest, um, I was brought up in New Zealand, born in Australia, and have spent the last, oh, oh however long, <laughs> I left uh, left New Zealand to come back to Australia in, in my very, very late teens, early 20s, and have been here ever since. But if New Zealand had uh, Australian style beaches, I'd be over there in a shot. And yes, I know Raglan is fabulous, Coromandel is fabulous, but hey, come on and experience the Australian beaches are pretty hard to beat. Okay, so the New Zealand election. Uh, I'm using my mystical manga cards. Um, I, w when I was younger, voting was compulsory in New Zealand. It is no longer compulsory. Please get out and vote. Um, they are very similar to, to a lot of other Westminster-based systems in that they have two major parties, but then they have the minor parties that can wield a lot of power. Uh, uh, and uh, they have a lower house and an upper and a Senate, so a lower house and an upper house. So the New Zealand election, 14th of October, advertising is not allowed to start until the 14th of July. So uh, that's however many months out, three months out. Uh, it's actually even longer than the Australian one now. We don't allow um, advertising for eight weeks before the election, but they've gone the 12. Early voting opens on the 27th of uh, September, which means you can uh, go to pre-polling booths uh, and mail-in voting, etc. So there's two major parties in New Zealand, there's, um, but they are both coalition parties. You've got the National ACT Party, which is the right-leaning party, and then you have the Labour Greens Party, which is the left-leaning party. Now, I believe the Labour Greens Party has been in power uh, in with the uh, Jacinta Ardern period into the, can't remember his name, I think his first name is Chris. A um, lot of controversy with decisions that they've brought out. Um, uh, it's almost uh, like they've gone too far and too fast uh, on the social agenda. Mm, I'm not disagreeing with it as a progressive, but it has caused a lot of uh, friction within the country. Um, and and also the Labor Labor Greens Party was in power during COVID, uh, which again uh, caused a lot of controversy as well. And then we have the Maori Party, which holds seven percent uh, in the polls at the moment, and they are the really the balance of power swing party. So I just want to see which way it's going to go because it is Nationals forty five percent, Labor Greens forty percent. So it is a close race. 
very, it's a bit too early to call, but let's have a look. Let's have a look. I'm going to have a look from, hmm, whose point of view shall I look from? I might, well, I'll throw, I'll throw, okay, I'll do four cards for Labour on the top, and then I'll do four cards for National on the bottom, and just see how it's going, see how it feels like it's going to play. Now, we do know that uh, polls, <laughs> Yeah, you know, polls really don't mean a lot. They sort of might kind of give a guide, but a lot of the time the polls are a, a particular set of people. Um, a lot of us youngers, I'll put myself in that category, don't have a home phone line. We have a mobile number. If we don't recognise a number, we don't answer it, and it just goes to um, message bank, so um, cell phone for you Americans. Um so those that have been polled tend to be the older people with a landline who take the time to actually answer the, oh, cards going everywhere, tend to answer the phone. Um, just excuse me for one sec. Sorry, all over the floor. They're a bit slippery this morning. Um, it may even be that they don't want me to answer this question just yet, but the polls tend to be a certain subset of voters that really don't give a full indication of the voting slant of the populace. So let's have a look. Four cards for Labour along the top and four cards for Nationals along the bottom, please, guys. We'll do a shuffle between. Do a shuffle between. Four cards for Labour, please. Okay. Right, and then I shall do four cards for nationals. I'm only using the main name. The cards feel very slippery today, four cards for nationals. I'll have another look closer to the election as well. It's a bit like the, um, the Voice in Australia um, vote. I'll have, I have looked on that. I'll have a look closer to that vote as well. Okay. Neither are particularly good. Let's have a look. Come on down. Now, they are upside down because that's uh, I don't have an overhead camera yet. Hopefully, when I get an office in my next residence, yes, I will. Okay, so let's start with, um, with Labour. A lot of work going on behind the scenes. I think this is their social programs that have brought forward a truth, a new start in regards to the truth in regards to how possibly, now if you're in New Zealand, let me know, possibly the um, majority, well, no, it's just been, it's been an honestly truthful new start for the country. They went hard on COVID. They went hard on renewable energy. Um, it is a country that really imports its fossil fuels. It, it doesn't have its own fossil fuel to the extent that the country needs it, runs a lot on hydrogen, uh, hydro energy, but you know that's controversial as well. What I'm getting is that New Zealand is very at the forefront of the honesty of what is required, the cutting through what is required. However, there is a portion of the population that feels like they have been betrayed, sabotaged, undermined. Um, and there is the Queen, there is something going to be, there is something that is still being offered emotionally that has not yet been revealed. So I suspect there's going to be something come out in the campaigning in the offer here as well. Mm, okay, let's see where it goes. But the alternative, the Nationals, moneyed up perhaps, giving and receiving help unfairly, tax deductions to the wealthy or to the corporations, perhaps. Again, if you're in New Zealand, let me know. However, uh, they are providing inspiration and there may be a female in their ranks, uh, uh, whether it's the deputy leader who is very good at orating the message. Ah, look at these last two cards for the National Party. You've got the, the, the swamp 
the, the, the secrets and lies and seedy underbelly of the swamp being exposed and chained to the devil. Now, if they're like conservative parties in other countries, they will be chained to the, the will of the corporations and the big donor money. Ooh, so neither of these are looking particularly good for me. Okay, what I might do is I'm just going to have a bit of a shuffle. I'll bring you up. You don't need to. A bit of a shuffle and see whether I can get an expansion on this. Oh, cards flying out everywhere today. Sorry about that. Um, a collective awakening and a new start for the voter. Like a call to arms and a bringing of a new start. So that may indicate... Um, uh, a swing to the national because it's it's easier to um, well it's easier to lose an election than win an election but we've got here the clouded decision bringing forth this devil energy and a tower moment as there are contracts and agreements made and disappointment with the outcome. I'm getting a real um, chill in the head in regards to the, not a chill. Um, it, it's sort of the the hair is standing up on my head in regards to this. What I really am feeling is that um, Labor, uh, the Nationals are going to win. Come on, let's come on down, pendulum. Last question, please, guys. At this stage, are the National Party in New Zealand going to win the election? Are they going to be able to form majority government? And that's a yes. However, looking at those cards that we had drawn, are the voters going to be disappointed when reality hits? Are the voters going to be disappointed when reality hits? And it is a sort of, because some are, some aren't. But I'll show you those cards again. It, again, it's too easy, too early to call. But I'm getting the disappointment, the contracts, the tower, clouded judgment and devil energy. And the fact that we've got devil energy here twice is, to me, is a good indicator that... Um, there are going to be promises made. Uh, yeah, okay. There are going to be promises made. There's going to be a good orator to sell them. When it, when it, I'm just getting when it comes to fruition. Um, there's going to be disappointment as it is shown that the party is chained to this great corporate greed energy. I'm going to say. I'm going to leave it like that. Yes, there's a cat in the back down there. I'm going to leave it like that. It's a little bit early to call, but I am, yeah, that's how I'm seeing it at the moment, is that the conservative right are going to win, um, but true colours are going to be shown when once, uh, yeah, on the base, secrets, offers being made, plan coming to fruition with overseas yeah i'm just getting there's going to be disappointment once um the true colors are exposed uh, i have no meat in this game i will merrily still fly over there once a year to visit family but i that's how i'm seeing it at the moment we'll have a look closer to the date thank you catch you later